don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So today I thought I would do page 11 in my volume of the dolls. And as you can see, I'm nearly getting towards the end. Oh, so hopefully in the next week or so, while we're all locked down and quarantined and staying at home, I might actually get to the end of the book. So I'm joined today in the background by Mr Bentley who's running around with his toy so you may hear some squeaking and also Ian's in the peanut gallery so there may be some heckling from his direction too. Peanut, you also peanut gallery? <laughs> I'll have to do some research. Are we back to the History Channel again? <laughs> I think so. Um, the peanut gallery, also known as the cheap seats. Oh yes. Right. It's me definitely in the cheap seats. <laughs> so there we go. So I've got my page open, my double page spread open. I've got a couple of clips up in the corners just to hold it in because it is getting quite thick now. Um, so I'm going to use for the background, I'm going to use a napkin that was recently sent to me in a little piece of happy mail from the lovely um, Debbie Ekstadt. Um, she sent me some napkins and some fantastic pages from another um, vintage journal that I'm not going to share with you just yet um, because I want to do something special with that. But thank you Debbie. This is one of the napkins that she sent and as you can see it's beautiful. It's got some lovely little cherry blossoms in there or whitish kind of blossomy kind of things and these beautiful beautiful kind of like watercolory birds. It's lovely and of course you get the top and the bottom of the napkin but this is just perfect for what kind of a page I wanted to do today. Now I've already separated the ply um, I'm going to keep hold of that because you know there is a shortage on toilet paper. Uh. Just kidding. Um, so I'm going to put literally just glue this straight down onto my double page spread and um, I say straight away I want to separate it a little bit first so I'm going to just remove that top section uh, just with my water brush because we've only got the one ply now um, it shouldn't really take much work just to run it across the top of the page and just over there and that should help just separate the page really really easily without any tearing and I can put that other little piece to one side I'll let that dry and I can use that again for a later date and now I've actually got a piece of tissue that will pretty much fit right the way across the page and I've got some excess down the sides but that's fine I can trim that off once it's dry so I'm just going to fold it back on itself itself and I've got some Windsor and Newton um, matte medium, oh, he says, I always have trouble opening the lids on this because it always glues up look, it's because I'm messy and I never tidy up after myself, just drop that into the bin. Is it Mr Bentley was running around five minutes ago squeaking like mad but he seems to have settled down a bit now, he's just come back from his WALK, the wind has got up, the weather that we've had over the last few days, that beautiful kind of spring weather seems to have evaporated and it's kind of moved back into wintry again. Blooming freezing. It is, it is blooming freezing, you're right. So I'm just going to paint the page, just put that matte medium all over, paying particular attention to the crease. We'll just go up and down, up and down, up and down and it doesn't matter if we've got excess like all that because what we can do is we can just move that over to the other page trying not to splash it all over my trousers. You really don't want that medium all over your crotch dear. No, we don't. Right, so there we go. So we've got the matte medium pretty much all over. All right, so then if we're very, very careful, I'm going to fold the tissue, the napkin in half and I'm going to try and just drop it into the center of the page. And just gently pat it down with my finger and then I can pull that one back 
and smooth that one down too. And then I can go over with the remaining matte medium. Doesn't matter if I get a few dinks and wrinkles and a few little bubbles in there, that's okay. And then I'm just going to very, very gently just go back over it again and seal it all in. So as you can see, the writing, just wipe that up, the writing from the page has started to show through because the tissue has gone transparent, see-through. So we'll just have to be very, 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 very careful whilst brushing in the matte medium that we don't damage the napkin any more than we have to. Okay, so I'll just go over that. It doesn't take long. It really doesn't take I'm going to take that off for a second just so I can get that glued down at the top. And I'm just working the matte medium into the page, going over very, very gently with my brush strokes. Work it into the middle. That's it. And then towards the bottom, towards the edge of the pages, just to make sure that it is stuck down like so. It's all started to soak in now, so most of that's disappeared. Drop my brush in some water, grab my heat gun, and we'll apply a little gentle heat just to help the matte medium dry just that bit quicker so we're not hanging around and waiting forever. So I'll get this dried off. And when it is dry, I will be right back. Okay, so that's pretty much dry now. And I have just gone around the edge with a pair of scissors and a little bit of a craft knife as well. I think that's Ian's actually. That's not mine. He must have left that. Is it when the he... long one? It is the long one. It is mine, yes. There you, go. you must have left it when you did your last project. So there you go. Um, so I used just that, just to cut round the edges, just to remove that little bit of excess. As you can see, you've got that lovely writing showing through, but you can still see the birds really, really nicely. But what I want to try and do is I want to try and create a kind of um, border around the edge of the page. Now to do that, I've dug out and dusted off, <sighs> blown the dust off my Neo colours, which I haven't used for a little while. And I've raked through and I've found um, the lemon yellow Neo colour. I've also pulled out the white, which another one that I don't use very, very often. But I've also got, I've dropped that in some matte medium, but never mind, um, the rose. Because I want to add a little touch of pink into this as well, but only a little bit in, in certain areas. Now I don't know why, but I have actually noticed myself that I have been drawn a little bit recently to the colour yellow. Um, the last page that I did in my volume had lots of yellow on it. Um, and I've got the yellow in the birds and the yellow in the flowers. And also um, in the dolls that I've chosen for this page, they also have been teamed up with a little bit of yellow as well. So I may be on a little bit of a, a yellow kick at the moment. If there is such a thing. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to go around the page, just adding in some yellow. I'm just scribbling in. And I'm just following kind of the pattern a little bit, particularly there, and then just into the leaves. And then around the bottom, just to kind of create a little bit of a birdie frame. <laughs> But I'm also going to add in some white just over the top because I want to tone it down. So when I activate these Neo colours with some water, because they are, if you don't already know, um, a water reactive like wax crayon. And you can get some really, really nice results. So if you just add a little colour to start off with and then what I like to do is just to get a, um, a wet wipe or baby wipe, if you like, that are only just kind of wet. But if you think they're too wet, I'll just push that into a little bit of 
kitchen roll. Just remove a little bit of the moisture, just so the damp, to the touch. And then wrap it round my finger a couple of times. And then I can go in and start to activate the paint. And I can work it and control it. I've got total control of where I want the paint and the colour to go. And then I can just pick some of that colour up and add it further up. And then if we need to just move it, wrap it again, round the finger, and then we'll just start rubbing. So I'll leave it heavier in places, lighter in others, just get it into the crevice, the crease between the page. Just have some touches of that colour. Like I said, it's you have the control as to where it's going to go and you can smooth it and move it where you want it to go without it running <coughs> into a place that you rather not, rather it never went, excuse me. <coughs> tickly cough. No, I've got a tickly cough. Don't say that. No, I've actually got a mint. <laughs> I'm sucking on a mint while I'm talking to you and it's just crumbled a little bit. And I've kind of inhaled it rather than swallowing it. Mm. Mm. It's a good job I've got some coffee to hand, isn't it? Okay, so, where were we? Dum, 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 so I'm just going to wrap that back round again. And then just try and blend that in. Now the thing with the Neo colours is that when they're dry, they're pretty much permanent. It's like witchcraft. But it's good. Look at that. Look at that. That's lovely. So if it's a little bit too dark, maybe towards the top there, you can just go back in with a clean bit and activate the white a little bit and that just lightens it up. Because it's best if you leave it to dry before adding on that extra colour if you want to. So I've created kind of a really nice little frame around that page now, which I'm fairly happy with. So again, I want to get it dry, so I shall just give it a little bit of encouragement, and then once it's dry and I'm happy, I'll be back. Tweety birds. Okay, so that neo colour is now dry. The overall page is it's still a little bit damp. It's not dried out 100% yet, but you know, I can't just go away and leave it for an hour or two and then come back again. I just haven't got time to do that today. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to glue down. It's dry enough. It's dry enough for me to be able to work on top. Look, nothing's coming off of my hands, so it's pretty much dry enough. So I've got my two little paper dolls, but what I've done is I've also printed off a couple of butterflies and just cut the butterflies off. Printed the butterflies from some digi images that I've already got. And I've just cut them out and I've just stuck them to the back. Just using a little bit of PVA glue. That's all I've done. So I did those a little while ago. So I'm gonna get some of my Aliens Tacky Glue. And I'm going to put a blobette just on the wings, on her elbows. Just go around. Just a little bit on the hand, and then a little bit there. She looks pretty cute. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to position her so she's standing on this branch here. Just like that. And then just push that down with the glue, and then just put something heavy-ish on top, just to hold it in place for a little while. Flat side down first. And then I've got my second little paper doll, which I've got the the little um, Boy Scout, I think. And again, I've put a little a little butterfly on the back, and I'm just going to add some glue 
to the back of him. So a dollop on his head, just some on the wings. And then just some going down the body. That should be enough. Like that. And then again, I'm going to place him stood on this branch here. Just pretty much just behind the birdie. And I'm just going to push that down and hold it just until that glue grabs. Which is going to take probably a minute or two. So I will let that set and then come back once they are dry and not going to go anywhere. Okay, so they're pretty much stuck down. They're not stuck down perfectly, perfectly, because the pages are wrinkled anyway. And then when you put the napkin down, that also is a little bit wrinkled. So you've just got to do your best <laughs> in sticking it down. But while it was actually sticking down, I did go over and just add a little coat of clear gesso over the top, just to tone down that shine a little bit. I've not completely got rid of it all just yet, but enough for there to be no reflection with the camera and the lights. He says, just adjusting them slightly. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is to add some pink into it. So I'm just going to put that to one side and I'm going to grab my pink Neocolor crayon. And I'm just going to put some of that colour down onto my mat there. And I've also got a fan brush with some clean water and I'm just going to activate it on there and then I'm going to add some pink little pink splatters just at the top just to kind of accent it a little bit just to add a little bit more of interest in there So there's just something else for the eye to hold on to. I'll just turn that there and put the guide on. I'll use my hand as a little guide. I'll just wipe that away. Doesn't need to do a lot. So we've got some little pink splatter highlights that also kind of double up for a little bit of pink um, blossom too. So it just gives you that little bit of extra colour just for your eyes to feast on. So let me grab a piece of tissue and then get rid of that. But I also want to do the same thing again with black. Just a little, not a huge amount. So I'll just clean my brush quickly, activate the black, which is a little bit darker obviously. And we'll just put a few of those couple there, a couple in the middle, and maybe one or two towards the bottom, in a bit more of a cluster. There we go. All done. So again, I just need to get that dried off, and then I'll be back. Okay, so my splatters are now dry. I want to add a little bit of grunge just around the outside of the page. So for that, I've just got my, <laughs> he says, vintage photo ink blending tool. And I'm going to grab just a piece of uh, <coughs> one of my page protectors. And I'm just going to, oh, let's just drop that underneath. And then we can just go around Add in a little bit of darkness just around that edge. Just to kind of create that vintagey style frame. Sometimes, you know, I know in the past people have asked me, 
How do you know when to stop doing stuff to an art journal page? Like, when, when do you know when to when, when enough is enough? When to call it a day? Well, you know when you start asking yourself the question. If you're starting to ask yourself the question, do I need to stop? Then you probably do. Because until you actually reach the stage where you're asking yourself the question, you're obviously thinking that the page needs more. Once you've hit that stage, your brain starts telling you to stop. So as soon as you start thinking, perhaps I ought to stop, then that's when you should stop. Easy as that. So, the last thing I want to do is just to add in my quote for the page. Um, and I've already printed it off on my computer and just cut it out on some paper. And again, I just want to add a little bit of um, an edge just on those. And the quote for this page is just taken from a, um, it's from a Mamas and Papas song. One of my favorites. It says, make your own kind of music. Sing your own special song. Because that's basically what we all try and do. Because we're all individuals, we all do things differently, and that's the way it should be. Because if we all did things the same, everything would look the same. Variety being the spice of life and all that. So it always amazes me, it always makes me laugh when I get comments left on some of my YouTube videos from viewers saying, oh, I would have done it differently and I would have done it like this and I would have done it like that. Well, yeah, of course you would because you're you. <laughs> and I didn't do it your way because I'm not you. So, but hey ho. Thankfully, we are all unique. We all have our own perspective. Okay, so that I'm going to put up here. Seeing as he's blowing his own trumpet. And she is singing her own special song. And whatever it is, we probably, well, look at that, it's just run out just at that wrong point. God, blimey. Ah, there you go. Just forced it a little bit more down the tube. I actually thought I could refill this the other day. I thought I had, but it's obviously a lot thicker than the original stuff because it doesn't come out as easy. False economy, but never mind. I'm going to put that down there next to her feet. Right where the birds are. Because that's exactly what they do too. They sing their own special song. Okay, so one last thing to do for me, because I think it needs it, is I'm going to add a little bit of a scribbly border. And to do that, I'm just going to use one of these gel pens. It's a uniball, a signal uniball, um, what do they call it? A gel grip pen, but it's also permanent when dry. So I'm just going to do a scribbly board. It doesn't seem to want to work. Uh, maybe because I've put the ink down. That's okay. Let's swap over to a food, food ball for purists. Right, because that will write on anything, as long as it works. I'm going to hide into nothing here today, aren't I? So look, good job, I've got more than one, isn't it? They're either running out, drying up. I just don't want to work today. Yeah, I think it's because they're going over the, the, um, the neo colour. But I always thought these pens wrote on just about anything. They seem to be working okay. Apart from the outcome. Well, yeah. Strangely. Look at that. They don't want to work on neo colour. I 
but that's all right. I kind of like the sketchiness of the line. It's different. I'm still getting a border. It's just not as. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Unified. Yeah, I suppose. Even. Yeah. It's a bit sketchy and a bit grungy, which is. Not wrong with that. No, absolutely not. It definitely needed that border. <laughs> I'll just go up and down. See, I probably could have just kept the same one, same pen, without having to switch. I will throw it away just in case. I'll try. I'll try it again on something else later. There we go. That will do. I think I'm happy with that back with my neo colors so there you go there is my border and i like it i like the way the page sits i like the color i like the fact that there's that just that hint of pink in the background just to kind of lift it a little bit and you've got the yellow from the butterfly wings and the yellow from the background which is being toned down a little bit with that white and also you can still see the original um writing from the page in the book coming through but you've got that hint of those lovely little birds there too. So I'm happy with the way that's turned out. Um, and let me just see if I can find that pen again, because I'll try and sign it somewhere. Just give it a go on this branch down here. I'll do it slowly. <laughs> and what date is it today, Ian? 28th. 28th, so Saturday the 28th. So 28, 3, 20. There we go. And that's it. That's page number 11 in my volume of the doll. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me create that page today. If you have, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help. And if you want to, please share the video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. State of my hand. Cloth! I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. Thank you.